Here we go. Take 10. <laughs> Welcome to Aging Gracefully. And I am Katherine Eyring, and I am here with Casey Crawford Callum today. Casey, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for having me as your guest today. We're both from Fairview Park, and we have a number of mutual friends. Sure do. Everyone's related. Yeah. <laughs> And we're both on the 12 Secrets group. Yes, we are. So my business partner, Michelle Payne, and I created that as a, an inspirational group. So let me just say, if you're on Facebook, please look for us at 12 Secrets. And you've been doing this morning nudge that got me so interested. And I thought, you know, let's talk about this. So you are a counselor. Do you want to yeah, give a sure. little background? So I'm a school counselor in Parma City Schools. I've been in education for now 31 years. Um, and I taught special ed at the beginning of it, but primarily I've been a counselor. And I'm an author of seven published books and a yoga certified teacher, a motivational speaker, and now a podcaster for Pep Talks People empowering people and your morning nudge mm -hmm. believe and breathe yeah and I love it so right now they would be able to find the morning nudge on what, Stitcher, Any, yes. Apple iTunes Spotify um, whatever platform there is out there right now for podcasts it's it's on there okay so please do find it yeah, and it be a subscriber. Yes. It's, it's three to five minutes just to get you up and going and feeling good about the day. Yes. Love it. Thank you. Okay. So you have this wonderful attitude and teaching people how to stay in high spirits and live life fully. What? Let's, let's hear a little bit more about this the background and how you got going. Um, you know, I feel like I was really raised this way. I was raised to just always keep this positive attitude. My parents were very positive. We grew up with just a fun life. Um, and, but we were raised very grateful, to be very grateful. I mean, that was ingrained in us, you know, that not to take anything for granted, to be always grateful and to always give forth to others. And So important. It really is. It's mm -hmm. it's a mindset. So we were never raised with a victim mentality. You know, I remember just having like a broken hand and not being able to run track and things. And my mother's like, you know, well, aren't you lucky that it's only your hand that's broken? I'm like, yes, yes, I'm really lucky that it's only my hand. Like, no, there is never any self pity for anything that you had going on, which was great because it's it built a very resilient. Um, person out of me and my siblings. You never think of yourself as a victim. You don't think of other people as a victim no, either. No, I, I think that these are all experiences that will take us through the journey that we just need to trust. And even though they seem awful at the time, there's there's a reason for them. And I'm not trying to sound cliche, but if you look back at your life and you look at all these awful things that happen, mm -hmm you can start to see some of the good things that came out of it. So I just always, my brain's always been finding the good, finding the silver lining in whatever it is that happens. Right. So I know you have had some pretty traumatic experiences. She's She's been through quite a bit and yet. You gotta keep dancing. You know, like I, well, and I say that while I live with MS and my little left leg, you know, dances to the beat of a different song sometimes when I'm out there dancing because it's, you know, not really connected to my brain sometimes. But even with the MS, I, I keep dancing. I really do, literally, just out having fun, um, living my, my fullest, living the fullest I can every day, just um, golfing, swimming, bike riding, walking my dog, Whatever I can do still, I can still walk, so I'm going to use these legs as much as I can. I love it. You know, so. You appreciate the marvel of the human body. So we could be focused on the negative, on something that's wrong, but instead, that's what I love about you, you choose to look at, well, what is right in this situation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what came out of it? Well, 
you know, in, in everything that I've experienced in my life, something good came out of even the darkest times. I mean, you know, my, my mother ended up with a brain injury and she ultimately committed suicide. Um, she was just not, not well and there was nothing the medical world could do for her. And they had told her this many times and she wasn't herself. But that offered me the opportunity to be such a better counselor to kids and families dealing with mental illness. You know, so so out of that dark time came my empowerment to be able to work and help kids and families. So finding that good, and you know, my husband he ended up uh, with terminal cancer uh, a few years ago. He passed away in 2015, and from it, I've been able to be a, a, the light in the darkness to so many that have mm -hmm. are, are grieving the loss of their loved ones, or are living with cancer, or have a loved one with cancer. So each thing that, that I have faced in my life, I feel has given me the, the skills and the tools to be able then to guide others. And I, I tell people this, that, that I really feel that my journey is about helping everybody else through their journey. You know, so I get these things that happen to me and then I can help everybody else when they get those things. You know, like I'm the, the first one, like, oh, I'm the first one to lose the husband. Hold on. No, I got gotcha. you. You know what to do. I got this, you know. <laughs> oh, you got MS too? Okay, I've had that. Let me tell you what we're going to do about this. So, yeah, you know, you just kind of, I'm just kind of the cutting edge, uh, I don't know, the maverick of some of this adversity in my life. So let me ask this. Do you believe that everybody has a life purpose, though, and that it has to be uncovered? I do, I and I hope it gets uncovered, but I feel like a lot of people don't have it uncovered. I think mm -hmm. they live some, some very unfulfilled lives because they don't realize that there's still so much potential, and I think they use age or circumstances as excuses, but my gosh, it doesn't matter what your age is, you still have potential and purpose. My father is 80 years old, and every day he gets out and goes and helps his best friend who has MS. And every day they work on cars like they're teenagers. They work on their Corvettes. This girl speaks my language, right? <laughs> you know, yes. at 80 years old, I mean, even through COVID, he was going down the street, getting his ice cream cone each day and taking his couple mile walk. And he you has know, purpose. I think even in this past year, regardless of what you choose to do for safety, you still are obligated you're you have a human responsibility to live life to your fullest so within your boundaries with all the technology that we have today is there really any excuse no no and you know it, it's a gift and would you throw away any other gift and the life that you've been given is the biggest gift that we've been given and yet sometimes people you know treat the bicycle they got or the car they got as a gift better than their own life life I mean this is the most precious gift of them all let's let's like celebrate this and at any time in your life you can hit that reset and reboot and exactly. just you know what okay I, I kind of had a funk for a decade maybe all right time to regroup time to reboot whatever is going on it's it's never too late I agree you see people that are picking up yoga or running and they're in their 70s 80s um there was a uh designer, famous designer that just got married at 75. You know, love that. Love I've that. known people who've been married in their 80s. I love it. Yeah, you know, exactly. You're you living. Live your life fully and and continue to, to search for your purpose and live your purpose. And, you know, like for me, I know my purpose is to help others get through their lives. But I've always, throughout my life, changed the platform and how I do it. You know, it was teaching special ed, it was counseling, it was writing books, it was yoga. So I still have the same purpose. So you can keep the same purpose, but not be like, um, I guess, unfulfilled in the platform in which you're doing it. No reason to get bored in it. Right. You just tweak it. Tweak it. Yeah. Find another way to do what you were doing. So, you know, that's that's how I've grooved through my life. It's like, okay, this isn't fulfilling right now. Teaching, I don't really care about curriculum. I care about the child. That's me. So I had to choose at a really inopportune time to go back to college for yet another degree. You know, you don't have the time or money to do that. I did it because I was not fulfilled. And then even with the counseling, 
Like I needed more and I was supposed to get my PhD, but long story short, I didn't, I couldn't do my sabbatical in the district where I was because I didn't have five years in. So it's like, okay, if I can't do, finish my PhD, how else can I fulfill my purpose of helping others overcome their, their adversity? And so I chose to write the books. Like I'm not gonna, you don't get down because that door shut. You get up and you pound on all the other doors. Like, how else can I do this? What other door is going to open, right? And you got to go find the door and you got to turn the handle. Right? <laughs> you and you to have to look for the synchronicity in life, right? The Absolutely. coincidences, the um, acquaintances, the opportunities. If you're not looking for it, you don't see. You don't see it. But boy, when you open your eyes, my gosh, the people that come into your life. Just exactly. You know, just us, you know, coming back together and, and all the people that I've come to that have, I've ended up through yoga and, and then, you know, the podcasting world and coming back to the yoga and just, just the winding of this and the people that have come in and out and that I've inspired, that have inspired me. And it's just a beautiful web. But you gotta keep your eyes open and your head up, mm -hmm. and you gotta look for it. Right. Don't don't let the door shut and just stand out in the hallway. So in other words, you start out with your happiness and explore life. You don't go looking for your happiness. You start out happy Absolutely. and decide that that's who you are and how you are. You should always be happy within. Yeah, you so, should be making yourself happy. I love everything that you're doing. I'm so grateful for you and that you are sharing this with the Aging Gracefully audience. Thank you. So let me conclude with one question. Okay. What do you think is the secret to aging gracefully? Mm -hmm. um, the secret is a recipe of ingredients, including humor, mm -hmm. exercise, healthy eating, socialization one way or, or another and attitude that attitude is just the the key ingredient of them all I so agree. combine all of that into your crock pot and you're gonna age really well <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again Casey absolutely I appreciate you having me on thank you so much cut all right you can watch